Moving from one game based off a film to another, and despite just coming out of the spooky season, there's still nothing stopping you from giving yourself a good scare and getting the adrenaline pumping. Today's game is on Alien Isolation, released in 2014 for the 7th and 8th generations of consoles as well as PCs, based off of the Alien movie franchise. Man, I can't believe it's already nearly 10 years old. I was still in university when this came out, and I remember a couple of my classmates talking about how good it was. The last mini-review I did was on Jurassic World Evolution 2, and I went a bit into my feelings with each of the movies, but my history with the Alien series isn't quite as vast. And by that, I mean I've only seen the first three films. The original Alien is a horror classic, even to this day. Sure, it's a little slow in places and maybe takes a bit too much time to get going, but the atmosphere is still great, the scares feel genuine, and the Xenomorph itself is one of the most iconic creatures in cinema due to its H.R. Geiger design and animalistic behavior. Aliens is pretty good too. Different, but a fun time in its own way. Me personally, I kind of prefer the tension and suspense of the first movie compared to the sequel's more sci-fi action feel. And my god, can most of the characters be annoying outside of Ripley, Hicks, Bishop, and Newt? Although even Newt gets a bit irritating with her high-pitched screaming. But anyway, the standout moments really do stand out. The set pieces are as good as they were in the last film, the action's entertaining, the aliens are as terrifying as before, and the Alien Queen is still a very well done effect. A fairly solid follow-up all around. Alien 3, on the other hand, felt very underwhelming. It was less testosterone filled than the last one and we went back to having just one alien again, but it didn't succeed at either being a scary horror movie or an exciting action movie. It kind of stunk at both. Unlike Aliens, where it felt like it actually continued the story, outside of the ending, Alien 3 simply feels like another generic space horror with some of the worst audio mixing I think I've ever heard. I can't hear half the things the characters say in this damn film, but then the action feels like it's gonna blow up my speakers like Marty McFly's in Back to the Future. Not a god-awful movie, but not a great one either. Quite the downgrade from the other two entries. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about the Alien movie so far. I haven't yet seen Resurrection, Covenant, Prometheus, or even the Alien vs. Predator movies, which, as far as I'm aware, it's probably best that you avoid them. Uh, maybe one day if I'm watching crap, then I'll riff on it with my brother someday, but I'm not in any rush to view them anytime soon. We're here to discuss Alien Isolation anyway, which is a first-person title that follows more in line with the original Alien and its horror roots, as opposed to making it more action-based like in Aliens. And impressively, it even nails down the old 70s futuristic look it had. Stuff like terminals and monitors don't appear similar to what you'd see in a sci-fi film today. It's all in that 4-3 ratio with a terrible analog signal. It's a neat little touch that does a good job at making you feel like you're in an Alien movie, right down to not having the aliens show up for like the first hour or so. Graphically, the game's kind of dated now. It came out during that in-between period from 7th gen to 8th gen gaming, so they didn't quite figure out how best to utilize the latest hardware just yet and still looks like an upscale PS3 360 title. Sadly, the 8th gen versions aside from PC also run in 30 FPS, when we know games like Resident Evil 7 and Doom 2016 are perfectly capable of doing 60 FPS. So if you have to pick up Alien Isolation on a single platform, I would say get the PC version, since that has the better frame rate. The only issue I ran into was the sound cutting out if the alien killed me. This apparently only happens if you're playing on a monitor that goes past 60 Hz, and I have a 144 Hz monitor. So in my case, I had to access the NVIDIA control panel and force the game to run at 100 frames per second, which thankfully did fix the problem. Now unfortunately, I have zero experience with other alien games outside of this one, but I understand that they're kind of a mixed bag. For every occasional decent one like Alien vs Predator Classic from 1999, you get Colonial Marines. That one in particular I remember hearing so much negativity about back in the day with how piss poor it was. And to that extent I kinda wanna have a look to see how much of a train wreck it is. Maybe someday. Isolation story isn't anything too complex. You play as one Amanda Ripley, the daughter of Ellen Ripley from the movies, who actually did get briefly mentioned in Aliens after Ellen woke up many many years later from her cryosleep. Amanda just wants some closure on what happened to her mom while she was aboard the Nostromo. And it turns out the Nostromo's flight recorder has been found on the space station Sevastopol. So Amanda and her very expendable crew travel inside to find it. But they find that the place is mostly empty and whoever's left on board has gone paranoid or crazy. Some of them even wielding weaponry. The reason being? Oh well, having a xenomorph running around and killing everybody might have had something to do with it. So now not only do we have to continue looking for the flight recorder, but we also have to worry about an alien skulking about and hunting for tasty humans. That's not all though, because androids call Working Joes who normally act as servants to Sevastopol's inhabitants have now gone completely hostile, and will kill anybody that comes in their way. There's a lot of obstacles being thrown in Amanda's way, and the poor girl's not having a good time at all. However, with a faithfully recreated scanner that detects movements and a whole bunch of tools and guns to exploit, 
It's up to players to get Amanda through Sevastopol safely whilst not getting caught by mercenaries, the working Joes, the alien itself, and incredibly late in the game, face huggers, because you clearly don't have enough on your plate as is. Your arsenal will become more expansive as you locate various blueprints and scavenge around for little trinkets needed to craft more stuff. Yes, there is a crafting system in this game, but in its defense, this came out at a time when it wasn't quite as abused in modern video games. The humans are absolutely no problem to take down with the amount of options you have. Even sneaking behind them and whacking them with your wrench does the job fine. But the working Joes take a hell of a lot more punishment before they fall down. And part of why the alien's such a huge threat is because it can't be killed whatsoever. The best you've got is a flamethrower and molotovs you get later on that shoo it away, but it will come back eventually. One of the most unique features about Alien Isolation is the Alien AI, which is incredibly smart. It hears your footsteps, can smell your presence, moves extremely fast, and will check every space it thinks you're hiding. Even lockers won't be a safe place if you don't step back and hold your breath. And if at any point the alien catches you, that's an instant game over and you get to see your gruesome demise. Sprinting is an option, but that's probably the last thing you'll want to do unless you fancy dying in a matter of seconds. It's not going to be very often you'll even be allowed to sprint without coming across danger, as the alien can also follow you into another room, or perhaps several rooms if you're especially unlucky. Vents? Sure, they'll help for a while, but those aren't 100% alien-proof either. This creature has thought of everything, and in order to evade it, you have to use your quick thinking and walk real slowly. This game is not about speed in the slightest. You need to be careful and aware of your environments as possible whilst clearing objectives and doing quick minigames, and that includes the working Joes, who are a little easier to get around but still just as terrifying. They're a lot slower than the alien, but do like to hunt in packs, making it more difficult to avoid them. All they'll do if they grab you is rough you up a little bit, including your legs somehow if they're on the floor. Don't ask me how that works. But if they get a hold of you too many times and drain all of your health, that's a game over as well. And as I mentioned earlier, the working Joes are quite durable against weapons too, which are best reserved anyway. Alien Isolation goes the Resident Evil route and makes ammunition incredibly scarce, so you're encouraged to use your guns sparingly, whenever you actually acquire one of the few and far between guns you carry. Despite being the only enemies with weapons, the humans are probably the easiest to take care of, because most of the time an alien is nearby, so all you have to do is throw a flare or a crafted noisemaker, and it's dinner time. It saves on ammo and gets the job done nice and quickly, plus it's hilarious. Yes, my precious, fee, fee to your delight. Oh shit, it got me. It's a lot of the same thing over and over again, sure, but there's just enough variety in terms of reaching goals and how you get around the enemies that it never feels stale. For the first half, at least. The second half is where the game starts dragging. The overall campaign is about 15 to 20 hours long, and I'm not the first to say that isolation goes on for perhaps a bit too long. The alien doesn't show up again for a very long time, so all you have in terms of enemies for a large portion of the game are the working Joes, and the repetition I talked about starts rearing its ugly head. Not to mention a lot of the areas are stuff you've seen already. Back when I played the PS4 version some years ago, I actually rage quit at one point with a whole bunch of gas chambers and working Joes with coats on that somehow gives them extra defense. They were just everywhere in this place, and evading them wasn't all that easy either, since it's mostly one looping pathway. Worst section of the game in my opinion. Things get a little more interesting with the nest, but this is where you finally have to deal with facehuggers who insta-kill you if they latch onto you, and are quite small to see your shoot at unless you're using the flamethrower. They're pretty good at catching first-time players off guard too, like hiding behind boxes or in vents, so keep that flamethrower ready when you can. The scares sort of dwindle as well if you're frequently getting killed by the alien or anything else that's chasing you. What was once terrifying suddenly becomes pretty annoying, and a part of that is because this game doesn't have a traditional checkpoint system. You have to use these telephone booths and put your keycard in to manually save. If you die, then you're taken back to your last save, so you have to use these telephones as often as you can. But at the same time, you can't just spam saves. After one save, it takes a little time before you can do it again. Why, I'm not sure, but this does all add some strategy to the exploring and horror on top of everything else. How and when should you use your next save? Are there enemies close by? Would you need to perform many tasks if you save now or later? There's a lot to think about on that front. The climax is kind of lame, though. There isn't anything too special that comes up, like avoiding the alien queen from the second movie or something. It's pretty much just more of the same thing, plus walking around really slowly in space, and the ending is left on an ambiguous note. Not a particularly memorable finale, but I guess the journey was all that I needed. And there's more to do after the campaign in the form of Survivor Mode and the DLC. Survivor Mode puts you up against a series of smaller levels with optional objectives in order to get the highest score possible. I've barely dabbled into this, however. I found that the main campaign was more than enough content, but it's there if you want more Alien Isolation action. 
I imagine this is where the Switch version of the game truly shines, since you can take it on the go and do a quick mission or two on a bus ride and put it down again. The DLC is probably a little more interesting. A chunk of it is just more stuff for Survivor mode, but there's a couple that actually recreate moments from the first Alien movie. Crew Expendable has the original team try and figure out a way to trap the Xenomorph, and you get to play as either Ellen Ripley, Dallas, or Parker, but seriously, why would you choose literally anyone else aside from Ripley? Would you honestly want me to play as Lambert? I don't freaking think so. It's an okay bit of side content, just a bit short even for a few bucks, but it's nothing to write home about. If you're a fan of the first Alien, you might get a kick out of it, but there's really not a whole lot here otherwise. Though it is pretty cool to have some of the original cast back together again, including Sigourney Weaver. Last Survivor is a slightly better experience, in my opinion. This one has you go through the climax of the first film, where Ripley's about to activate the self-destruct sequence while the Xenomorph searches for you now that the rest of the crew are dead. No Jonesy to speak of, though, so let's assume he's safe and sound, shall we? I think the overall mood and atmosphere of this DLC feels more suitable to Alien than Crew Expendable did, and it provides a bit of context to those who haven't seen the Ridley Scott classic and only know Alien through playing this game. Out of the DLC, this one's perhaps the most engaging, but you're not missing a whole lot if you decide to skip out on the season pass altogether. It goes on sale pretty frequently, however, so get it at your own risk. But that's Alien Isolation. It's slow and doesn't carry a lot of action like some games in the franchise do. But if you want a great horror title to make you feel jumpy, go pick it up. Just bear in mind that the first half is certainly the strongest compared to the second, and that the adventure itself is longer than you might expect, which could potentially put some people off if you want a game that gets in, gives you some scares, then gets out. Isolation definitely overstays its welcome a tad, but it is for sure worth the asking price. Though again, I would wait on a sale if you're still not quite positive you'll enjoy the game. It's something that I can say I've not quite experienced before, or at least many times in my life. So check it out when you can, especially while the wasps of Halloween are still lingering around. With that said, I hope you all enjoyed this mini-review, and I'll see you for the next Trash or Treasure video with Spider-Man Miles Morales. Catch y'all later.